risk in general for me is really such a comfort zone. I was the kind of kid who was just like, dare me to do something. I loved the, the high of that. I'm remembering when I was maybe like seven or something, playing at the park and there was you know, those really intense basketball games with men playing and they're just shouting and like, I'm open, I'm open, you know, like, um, and my friends dared me to join the game. Do you mind holding that for a sec? You can let go whenever you need to let go. Thank you. And I just jumped right in and just was like, I'm open, I'm open, you know, just like doing the, the stuff I saw them doing. And I was like floating on air, you know, because I'd done it and I'd survived. Do you mind just holding this? You can let go whenever you need to let go. I guess I learned, you know, if you're not afraid, and why should you really be afraid, then it's like you can fly. You have the superpower. <laughs> Now, I usually say I'm a writer, filmmaker, and artist. So within that, I perform. And I work in these different mediums. Some things are hidden for a reason, and if you see them, you'll be changed forever. But I wanted to be changed forever. It feels like there's a million subgenres of all those things like filmmaker you know that to me includes feature films and cut and things you might make really quickly and in an afternoon you know so i'm not really a a purist you know i started so young i started when i was 16 writing and directing my first play I had started a correspondence with a man in prison. There used to be lists of prison pen pals in the back of magazines, and I really just chose him at random. It wasn't romantic because I was, thank God, like a hardcore feminist, but it was very intimate um, once that boundary was set. Dear friend, this is legal paper. I wish it was the opposite. How has your day been so far? You make me wish we could meet. Perhaps we can someday. I think he and I were in it for similar reasons and that we loved the attention. What teenage girl doesn't love, like, like literally I was the only person, like free person in his life. He hadn't gotten a letter in 12 years. And I became alienated from my friends and high school and like because I couldn't get this across and so I wrote a play. You see you're making me remember but I'm not remembering who I was I'm remembering who I wanted to be and there's a difference. I shouldn't be able to know you as well as I do because I know I mean I guess one reason I do these projects with people who are so far out of my world is that I'm thrown out of my own assumptions about how things work or what things mean, even just very basic things, like even friendship, like, is this a friendship? My parents are writers, so from them, I learned how to be intimate with my work. And I guess my great hope was that through my work, I could have intimacy with other people. Based on what I saw growing up, I wasn't sure how else to connect. I don't know, the, the idea of the, you know, the, the found family or the, the friend that kind of saves you, like I, um, those are sometimes in my work, and it's, you know, I know it's a kind of common theme, but I can't, you know, 
uh, never gets old. How about this, right? You think that was the big one? I don't think that no, it was. That was it. <laughs> Thank you. I dropped out of college and did want to make movies and was surrounded by women in bands and you know we started a recording studio in our basement and you know there was very much the sense that like you could just figure it out yourself so i started this thing first called big miss moviola and then moviola tried to sue me welcome to big miss moviola my name is miranda july and i'll be your host the premise was if you send me your movie I'll put it on a VHS tape with nine other movies made by nine other women and send the tape back to you so we can all see each other's work. I was providing a service that I needed in order to conceive of myself as a filmmaker. And I did that for 10 years. I did it until, um, until I made Me and You and Everyone We Know. What are you doing in my car? <laughs> no, I don't know you, and you certainly don't know anything about me. I mean, what, what if I'm a killer of children? Yeah, well, that would put a damper on things, wouldn't it? I remember actually after that movie came out, and I remember performing and realizing, like, they just want to see the girl from that movie. That actually was a bit of a crisis at first. And that was actually the point when I started um, making pieces that asked a lot of the audience. When I signal you, if you could just walk towards me very, very slowly. I noticed her immediately when I walked out on stage that first night. <laughs> she seemed to radiate light. I've been in two relationships with women before, but they were more butch. <laughs> so right now I'm finishing a book, a kind of long novel about the second half of a woman's life. And it's a romance. There's also dance in my book. So this is my novel. No one's supposed to see this ever, but um, so don't maybe get too close, but um, or it's fine, whatever, who cares. Uh, this is the first half of it. This is the second half. When I can't write any more, like it's diminishing returns, um, then I come to this rack. It's like costumes to dance in or just to make things in if I want to become aware of my body in a different way. And then I'd be like, well, this was a costume, but, but who is this, you know? And I started actually buying things that make no sense in real life, but are great for this sort of thing. Like, what is, what is this? For me, it's, it's always about like energy and excitement and mystery. And one way it exists is in these mediums, like simply working in a form with materials you haven't used before is, is novelty and mystery and in a, in a quite physical sense and sometimes in a collaborative sense. So day one of the pandemic, the phone rings and it's an unfamiliar number and I answer it and it's clearly like a solicitor. Miranda's phone number was assigned to me but she was not a typical customer that will immediately hang up the phone or drop the call. Uh, maybe I'd somehow ended up on a list for like self-published authors, which I'm not. Um, but, and so I answered all their questions. And then 
I said, can I ask you some questions? Where they were, they were in the Philippines, uh, how old they were, 27. I couldn't tell what gender they were. They were a trans woman. Here in the Philippines, most of the religion is Roman Catholic. It's very hard for you to be accepted, to belong in a community. So I started to share my background and she thought of a project that we can collaborate. This is the uh, edition, the, the limited edition that I made out of the project with Jay. She said that she's gonna be sending me assignment and then I'm going to respond it in pictures. This is the first assignment where Miranda asked me to bow to something that is also important to me, which is money and a bed because I love to sleep. So in this picture, this is where all my suffering happens. The best feeling is when, you know, you throw down a challenge and then the person comes back with something much bolder. I mean, that is what really makes it a collaboration and that happened so regularly with Jay. This is me. So sharing that to Miranda was really kind of risky, but at the same time happy because I was able to express everything, like every pain, every truth that happened to my life is all in this project. I mean, I'm full of my own trust, abandonment issues, like all kinds of um, things that make it hard to get close to people. So it's a real miracle when something like that connection can happen. It becomes very beautiful and emotional and light, which is so, so incredible because it's not very light inside me. <laughs> I think that's part of the risk thing is like, literally anything is possible in the moment. It's kind of like being in a dream or something. But a shared dream, not a lonely, you know, in my head dream. And the reward of working this way is creative freedom on every level.